Hello, and welcome to the CCNP Routing and Switching course offered by Simply Learn. The last lesson focused on traditional spanning tree. In this lesson, we will focus on advanced spanning tree. Let us begin with the objectives of the lesson in the next slide. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe Cisco and IEEE variants of STP. Explain RSTP and RPVST plus port states, roles, convergence, and topology changes. Configure root bridge and backup. Verify PVST plus, RPVST plus, and MST. Describe how to prevent STP problems. Let us start our discussion of different types of spanning tree. Common spanning tree uses one instance of STP. Processing is concentrated in the single root switch. Also, if a port is blocking, then it is not used for any data traffic, although BPDUs are still exchanged. This decreases the amount of bandwidth available in the network. To overcome these limitations, STP versions that accommodate multiple instances of spanning tree are developed. These allow load balancing. There are two approaches. The first is to create different root switches for each VLAN. This distributes processing requirements among different switches, but it duplicates root switch processing for each VLAN. Another approach is to group VLANs and create instances of STP by group. In the next slide, let us discuss STP implementations that use these approaches. The STP implementations can be categorized into all VLANs and multiple spanning trees. The two STPs that create one instance of spanning tree are common spanning tree and rapid spanning tree. The multiple spanning tree can further be divided into per VLAN STP and per VLAN list STP. Both the per VLAN STPs are Cisco proprietary. These are PVST plus, also called PVST and PVRST plus. Spanning trees are created for a group of VLANs in MST or MIST. In the next slide, let us discuss the original PVST, PVST+, and PVRST+. 